If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman. And as always, I am here on Mondays with Joshua Radawan, who is one of my students and an amazing spiritual badass in his own right. And today we are going to talk about I see dead people and bunnies. <laughs> Now the bunnies is just kind of a funny thing. It's it's the it's a reference for me to the white light and bunny crowd of the people who are, you know, I'm so spiritual, right? See me, I'm so spiritual, you know. It's it's very different energy than the grounded woo that we do here, right? So the white light and bunny crowd are the 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 people who tend to be the toxic toxic positivity people, right? So, you know, we're not going to be talking about toxic positivity today. We, I'm sure we'll cover that in another episode, but Today, we're going to be talking about I see dead people, which is mediumship. And you guys heard me do some of this on a Friday episode when I was working with Colby and we were doing the reading for him on his travel business. And so I thought we would talk a little bit about mediumship today, how it works, how, you know, what happens when we die and, you know, what, what you can expect when you start talking to people from the other side of the veil, right? So let's start with what happens when we die. Okay. So think of each lifetime as a, a role that an actor plays, right? Your soul is the actor and this life is the role. And so when you die, you cross over and there's a part of you that is still in that role for a period of time, right? And that's oftentimes about three days after you die you know, unless you have a violent death and, and it's a sudden violent death and, and that can, that can cause some differences. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but for the average person, if you, if you know you're dying and you cross over, usually they're around for about three days afterwards. And that's, you know, they're there to watch the funeral. They're there to make sure their family's okay. They're there to orient. And then at some point when they feel complete with that, the, the light will open to the other side and they will be crossed over. Now, I know a lot of people have near death experiences and they have the light open immediately and they cross over and whatever. And yeah, that can happen too. But there's also, you know, they tend to, they tend to come back for their funeral. Okay. So it's almost guaranteed that whoever you are at a funeral for is at their own funeral. And so I've actually had to avoid a funeral because I knew my friend would be sitting next to me making snarky comments and I wasn't going to be able to keep a straight face and that would make me the center of the attention and that was not the goal of the funeral so I didn't go. I wanted people to have their space to grieve. But you know when when they cross over they they tend to attend their funeral, right? And so there is that piece. And then once you cross over when you cross over the veil, you drop the role, you go back to being the actor, right? So once you go into the light, go into the light, Carolyn, I'm, I'm dating myself. <laughs> Poltergeist reference for those of you too young to know. And once you go into the light, then you have gone back to your soul family. You've gone back to the one, the oneness and you have dropped your role. Now you still remember playing that role. You still enjoyed that role. You have an attachment to that role because it was you for so long. Just like an actor who's been playing the same same role on stage has has been attached to it because they've it, it's part of them, right? But you are the actor again, okay? And so when you think about it that way, it makes a lot of sense, right? So when we talk about ghosts and ghosts are... I don't really call people who've just crossed over, you know, ghosts. I mean, they are technically ghosts, but mm, they're only here for a short period of time. They're more like, you know, they, they're just hanging around for a little bit. Ghosts are people who have decided to stay. The light came and they didn't cross and they decided to stay for whatever reason. Sometimes it's because they need to make sure somebody's okay. Sometimes it's because they're pissed off and they, they want to take it out on people. Sometimes it's because they, they were killed and they want to you know, have their murderer be brought to justice, or sometimes they don't know they're dead and they didn't recognize the light when it came, right? And, and 
that's a big one, actually. That's a huge one because we often, you know, whenever I, whenever I talk to a ghost that's sort of been around for a while, I'm like, I start with, you do know you're dead, right? <laughs> and they go, oh, that would explain so much. <laughs> it's just, that's the same answer every time. They just, they don't go, what do you mean I'm dead? They go, oh, that would explain so much, right? That's the answer. And so a lot of times they don't know they're dead. And so when you're talking to a ghost that's, that's stuck here on this side of the veil and you want to clear them, you, you have to get their permission to clear them for one. Let's talk about that because, you know, if, if you've got a poltergeist or, you know, something like that, then, then you've, you've got a problem, right? Because they're mad and they're going to take it out on anybody who gets in their way. So talking to a poltergeist, rule number one, you're never in the place that the poltergeist is when you talk to them because they will throw things at you and hurt you to get you to leave. And so, you know, you have to convince them to cross over. So I, I recently did a clearing for a friend of mine and her father had crossed over and he was pissed that his life had been cut short. He was angry and he was going nowhere. She was like, I need to know he's okay. And I'm like, Ooh, yeah, he's not right now. Let me fix that. <laughs> right. And so what I had to do was open the gateway and say, okay, this is a role you're playing and you're very attached to it right now, but I'm going to remind you who you are. Let me open this gateway. Let me let you see your spirit family on the other side. Let me explain to you what's going on and how you're stuck in this misery. And, and, you know, maybe you might want to let this role go because it's over whether you like it or not, it's over. So it might be time to, to go find another role to play. And wouldn't that be fun? Right. And, and he and I had a conversation about it and he eventually went, yeah, that's, you know, you're, you're right. I'm going to let this go. I'm going to, I'm going to cross over. And that was honestly remarkably easy. I, I expected it to be a harder sell, but ultimately he chose happiness, which is you know, when you see the light, the light is golden and beautiful and wonderful and it's loving and it's caring and it's really hard to not go into the light because it's just such a wonderful place to be. Right. So, you know, he did eventually cross over. And so, you know, sometimes it's that simple. Other times you're talking to people who have come back for a reason. So like when I was talking with Colby's mom on the episode that we did, you know, she came, she just showed up in the middle of the reading. I didn't go looking for her. She just showed up and was like, I need to tell him this. I'm like, okay, here we go. What do you got? Right. And now I'm just translating. I'm literally just, you know, she says something to me. I'm playing telephone and saying it to him. So hopefully better than telephone usually does, but yeah. <laughs> and, and so that's more of a, you know, you're bringing a message through. The first time I ever did mediumship for somebody, I was working in my retail store. I was, I was at Mystical Times and, and this lady had scheduled a, a time to come in and she didn't tell me what it was about. She just scheduled a mediumship session. And, and well, the first time I did it for pay, I should say, it's not the first time I did it, but, and she, she was, yeah, I don't remember what time her appointment, unless her appointment was one o'clock, right around 1130, 12 o'clock, the person she came to talk to showed up and started following me around my store saying, tell her she ain't gonna find that ring. She ain't gonna find that ring. She ain't gonna find that ring. You, you tell her that she ain't gonna find that ring. And I'm just like, oh my God, what is this? I said, I will tell her, but she's not due to be here for an hour and a half. So how about you just give it a rest sister. <laughs> like, you, know, you are up my butt, right? <laughs> Sit down and, and be still for a minute because I can't tell her until she gets here. I will tell her. Right. And so, you know, she, she finally backed off, <laughs> but then the woman walked in and she, she gets up and she starts telling me over and over and over. And then the woman's trying to talk to me while this, this person that she's come to talk to, which is one of her ancestors was like, you tell her, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I said, I, I, I'm trying to have, I don't multitask and I'm trying to have this conversation with this woman who has come in for the session. And I just looked at her and I was like, okay, I have to tell you this to get your, your ancestor to shut up because she has been yelling this at me for an hour and a half. And she is yelling at me now. And I cannot get her to stop until I say this. So I need to tell you, you ain't go find that ring. <laughs> and she was like, oh, why not? Because that's exactly what she came for was to find a ring. Right. And, you know, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes you, you're trying to get a message across from spirit and, and, you know, make a connection between people and whatever, you know, sometimes it's a, a way to provide comfort to somebody whose family has crossed over. Sometimes it's, 
you know, you know, there's a lot of different reasons why people do mediumship, but mostly it's just to provide comfort to the living, right? I had, I had personally never studied mediumship and we had opened a metaphysical shop last year and a woman came in for a reading and I had generally just, you know, intuitive reading, you know, kind of like the seer, I would kind of formulate that into a reading as well and or use cards. And I, I have a, you know, I have a way of connecting before each, each reading individually. So, you know, I, I, you know, view myself as a conduit. I call in my team and their spirit team. And I usually, you know, close my eyes during this process. And then I uh, go into the reading. They did. I didn't open my eyes for an hour. You know, I, I was, it was the, and I was like, wow, this is the craziest thing. Like I just started having all the visuals and it was like the aunt coming through and showing me, you know, like she was the one that was the protector of the family. And she saw how much she went through with her narcissistic mother and she was there to comfort her. And it was like, I got done and I just, you know, opened my eyes and this woman's like in tears saying, thank you so much. And I was just, I was floored because that had never happened to me before. Um, and I wanted to share another story. So it was, a, it was about eight months ago, you know, we, my, my fiance has a daughter who's very tapped in, you know, her name's Avalon. So go figure, um, <laughs> go figure. <laughs> go figure. <laughs> so she had started really having trouble sleeping at night. You know, like she said that she could hear footsteps and all the things and, you know, we're magical people. We don't really poo any of that in the house, but I wasn't really picking up on anything myself and didn't really spend a lot of time with it, you know, but learning curve. So, you know, it was about four months ago, we had a, we were doing some energy work in the home for one of the paranormal teams that we take care of. And they were here and they're like, you know, you got somebody sitting over here. I was like, huh. So we decided to take a look at it. And what it ended up being is there was a woman who was attached to the house. She had been widowed by somebody in the Second World War and had never left the house. She was waiting for him to come home. Yeah. And we, you know, she was very resistant to crossing over because this house was their dream. And she was kind of sitting here to make it. You know, she she was, you know, part of it, but she was really kind of drawing energy from the kids and freaking them out because she was based upstairs and that's where they stay. So, you know, we had a we had a talk with her about it and we helped her cross over. Um, and that was a unique, unique situation. Um, yeah. Well, and, you know, there's all kinds of stories and and, you know, sometimes it's ghosts and sometimes it's other entities. Right. You know, I've. Uh, I've done, I don't know if I want to tell this story on this podcast or save it for, for another one, but um, yeah, let's save this one for another one. We'll, I'll tell you a different story, but there was a, I bought a coat at Goodwill once, you know, many years ago, and it came with the ghost of the lady who died, who it had been donated from her estate. And, you know, I put on the coat and she would just talk at me nonstop because she couldn't get anybody else to talk to her. I was the only one who would talk to her and she was lonely, right? <laughs> just la, 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 la. I was like, okay, we have to have a conversation. When I am talking to other people, you shut up. <laughs> she was like, what do you do? I'm like, mm, no, no, this is the rule, right? And, and you know, she was like, mm. and I did eventually get her to cross over. But the one that's most impactful or was most impactful in my life was I bought a house in 98, 1998. And it came with the ghost of a Revolutionary War soldier. It was across the street from Fort Griswold in Groton, Connecticut, in Groton City. And that had been the site of a Revolutionary War massacre. massacre. And the, the house was, I don't know, like 120 years old or something. And so much, much later than the, the massacre, but evidently it was built on the site where he died. So he, he occupied the house. And so the... Um, it started out where the first night I was there, I went to bed and my bed started shaking. It was vibrating, right? It was like shaking my bed. He was like trying to shake my bed to tell me he was there, right? This was a long time ago. I was 28, right? I'm 54 now. So it was a really long time ago. And, but he was shaking my bed and, and I, I didn't know what to do with about it back then. I didn't have those skills yet. <laughs> I was like, 
leave me alone, right? You know, after I got up to see if I was on a, a railroad line or, you know, if the, if the furnace had kicked on and the house shook when the furnace kicked on or whatever, I looked for all the, the rational things first. And then I just went to the bed, put the covers over my head and said, leave me alone. And it stopped. Right. And so, you know, I talked to my, my teacher who was teaching me psychic development skills at the time. And I said, you know, this happened. And she's like, it's your house. You have a right to evict him. And I was like, well, but you know, I, I don't know who he is and I don't know what's going on. And I don't, she's like, well, just go talk to him. See if you can work something out. And that's what we did is that, you know, I agreed to keep him company and he, uh, he agreed to protect my house. And that was a good deal as it turns out, because, you know, my house got swarmed by dark elves later. And that's a different story. We'll talk about that at some point. But, you know, this is this is how I get you to come back, by the way. <laughs> so There's so you. many stories, guys. There's so Keep many coming. stories. Oh, my God. So many stories. So oh, but, I had that uh, one, uh, the yeah. couple, I, I, I guess it was a couple months ago now, you know, like I was talking about that paranormal team I investigate or I've been on investigation with. I had learned through the work that, you know, I can help remove entities from people with their, with their permission, obviously. And I might have been a little in my ego about it. So mm. <laughs> one of them was investigating a place where if, you know, we have any serial killer buffs, Ed Gein was housed and they had one of his knives there. Well, of course, this gentleman, very warrior type, love this guy, Mike, if you hear this, I love you, buddy. Stop touching shit. He, so he touched he, yeah. he touched he touched the knife <laughs> and all of a sudden he has a wraith on him and this is a this is a nasty piece of work and i i mean that like yeah they are i've been banged up by a lot of shit but as soon as i took it off him i've never felt it was like my ears are popping it's just like all over me i was like wow you are a tough little bugger and uh, it, it, it came home with me, you know, and, and a wraith by definition is a hologram of someone who left this life with, you know, before their time as well. You know, they had a purpose here still, and they're very, very angry and, you know, cannot be reasoned with a lot of, you yeah, know, goes anger and vengeance incarnate. Is basically they're not, they're not to be messed with. You know, I did a lot of, I, I actually, it was on my property line. It's so funny because this whole story is, is really well, I don't know how about how funny, but it, it created a, you know, it implanted a thought that created a, a, a fight that left my wards down mm. and it got into the property and all of a sudden all the lights in the house start flicking. I'm like, oh shit, you know, so we're out using the singing bowls and, you know, you, you know, like I'm calling on, you know, a lot of my team to help me to push this thing to the property line so I can get the board and the wards refortified. And then I, I, I was like, I don't know, this isn't good. <laughs> So I called you. <laughs> I was like, this isn't, you know, because it it had, you know, like I have a symbolic library that tells me what things are. And I did not see it for what it was because I was in my ego about it. I was like, oh, this is just a, you know, lower level demonic entity. Not a, not a big deal. I was so wrong. And this thing. Lower level demonic entity would not have made it through your words. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no, no. A learning curve. You know, this is how I learn. Not, not that I'm manifesting that, that I have to learn that way. Yeah. You know, it was just, it was just a very unique experience and, you know, some things are pretty rowdy, you know, they can be pretty rowdy and, and right in your face. Uh, I haven't dealt with a poltergeist per se, but, uh, I, you know, this one, this one gave me caution and, uh, you know, taught, taught me a, a valuable lesson in, in, you know, being open to just remove anything for anybody. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. You got to be prepared. Some things are going to come after you if you take them off of somebody else. So you got to be really careful with that. Technically the ghost that shook my bed was poltergeist because it moved things in the physical mm -hmm. realm. Right. So that he was I technically a poltergeist. So he was a friendly poltergeist, thankfully, but yeah, being that you're living there, it's kind of a problem if you live there. But definitely you don't want to normally deal with a poltergeist when you're in the property that they're doing things in. And the other thing to be careful of is if you see a child ghost, because child ghosts almost always have a ghost protector associated with them. So you may see the child and she seems fine or he seems fine and they're just lovely and you go to say hi. And then suddenly this adult protector ghost comes out of nowhere and comes to whack you because they're protecting the child. And so, you know, they often are not even related to the child. They just found the child ghost and, and adopted them, right? Because they give them a purpose, right? 
So that can be very challenging as well. So you have to be very careful with child ghosts because they, the protectors are often very dangerous. So there's, there's more things in this world than you, your, than in your experience ratio or something like that. I, I know I just screwed that quote hard, but you, you get my idea. Um, more things in heaven and earth than are in your experience or something. I don't know. Shakespeare, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I use your quotes all the time and I know I slaughter them, but nobody else knows I'm slaughtering them. So go. I just roll with it. And I don't care. So he, don't he care. probably didn't care either. <laughs> <laughs> He's long since passed over to another role, right? So, so I wanted to ask you a question kind of, yeah. you know, about the, you know, beginning part of this topic, you know, when, when someone crosses over, right. Mm -hmm. And they've been on the other side for a while, they can, can they choose to remain in that form to become one of your spirit guides to be you know kind of i don't know i don't want to say bound but kind of bound to that life's experience to stay back and help people uh, yes and no so how do i say this so your guide or your your let's say your grandmother right you know <laughs> right? Saying, i love you so I, pick the uh, right person? I, I love you so much <laughs> never told her this Never, yeah, you haven't told me this. So I'm like, it's your grandmother, right? So yeah. So your grandmother played the role of your grandmother and then she crossed over and she chose to join your spirit team. But that doesn't mean she doesn't have her own life on the other side. It means that when she comes through to talk to you, she puts on that role so that you can recognize her. And then she talks to you and then she goes off and does her own thing on the other side. So she has not reincarnated because you can't stay in a spirit guide role and reincarnate. Well, you could, but it's most people don't. Okay. Because it's a little schizophrenic, but the, the thing that you, what you see when she comes through to you is her stepping into, there's an energetic clothing, right. Of the role that she played. And that clothing exists and she puts it on to come through to you so that you recognize her. That's it's so interesting because she comes back to me in her prime, you know, like her, oh, you, yes, know, uh, you, you know, like, you know, yeah. like she, she comes back and she's like in her thirties, she's vibrant, you know, like, you know, she, you know, like clear skin, no wrinkles and she's happy, yeah. you know, and, and just, uh, it's, it's really cool to see that. Yeah. I, I, I've always wondered that. So thank you for answering that for me. Yeah. I have, I had a friend years, years ago, one of the very first times I did mediumship ever. And he asked me to get in touch with his grandmother. And when she came through, she came through as this blonde bombshell, like, you know, like really hot, you know, in her twenties, thirties, in thirties, forties. Right. And just, she just kept showing me her hair and how beautiful her hair was. And I was telling him this and he's like, yeah, that's her when she was younger. But when she was older, she always had this dark hair and it was up in a bun and it's very severe and it wasn't very interesting. And, and she, she looked very different. And he said, and I said, well, she wants you to know that she has her hair back and she's super excited about it because she just keeps showing it to me. And isn't it fabulous. Right. And, and so, you know, but that was a big validation for him because, you know, she came through as the person she had been earlier in life. So it wasn't even the image he had sent me, right? When I was trying to connect to her. So this is how I do mediumship is I have the person think about the person that they want to get in contact with. And if that person shows up, which is never guaranteed that the person's gonna show up, right? So you, you don't know. But if that person shows up, then, you know, I translate, right? And so, you know, the image he had sent me was this older woman with this dark hair and a big severe bun and very sort of upright looking. And the, and the person who came through was this young blonde bombshell, you know, kind of hot and, and you know, vibrant, so like you just said, you know, same idea. Um, and, and I didn't know if I had the right person. I was like, this is the energy the the person that you sent me, but she doesn't look like the person. And he's like, no, no, no. That's exactly what she looked like when she was younger. And I'm like, okay. So, but that's what happens. And, you know, sometimes people just show up, right. I was at a, I was at a mind, body, spirit event in Richmond, probably in 19, 2019. And, and I was talking to this woman and she was asking me about her brother and her brother had committed suicide like seven years earlier. And he came through and just came screaming in 
and he's just like, would you tell her to let it go? <laughs> he's like, I'm fine. I've told her I'm fine so many times that she needs to just get over it. I'm done. Just, just tell her I'm fine. And I translated exactly the words that he gave me and exactly the energy he gave it with. And she's like, oh my God, that's so him. And I'm like, he says he's fine. <laughs> And leave it be. He says, I'll be there when you cross over and I'll prove it to you, but leave me alone. <laughs> so she, was, she was like, I got it. <laughs> She's like, you're the only person who wasn't like trying to be kind about it and trying to say it nicely and everything. You just like brought him through and now I know it's him. And I'm like, okay, good, because he's pissed. <laughs> She's like, yeah, he would be. <laughs> Yeah, I had, a, I had a unique experience last, oh, was it December? December or January. One of the elders of our family passed away. And, you know, he had had dementia uh, towards the end. And I was worried about how he crossed over, you know, because, you know, like we know a little bit deeper things than, you know, a lot of people in the, in the church do sometimes. Not a, not a judgment, just a, you know, a thought there, but went out that morning and I saw you know, it was four eagles and there's been four of the elders that passed in our family. And I, I, and it was the day of the funeral actually. And I went to the funeral process and everybody's singing from the hymns and I'm just trying to tune in. Like, did you, you know, is there anything I can do to help? Did you cross over? And they just gave me the visual of the four eagles, you know? So I, I knew in, I knew in that moment that he had, he had made his transition. So yeah. I was pretty happy about that. Yeah. I went to my father's funeral and, you know, I wasn't there when he crossed and I wasn't part of the funeral planning and everything, but they had a very neutral funeral. Like if his picture hadn't been up there, you wouldn't have known whose it was. They didn't have a eulogy. They didn't have, it was just a basic funeral. And my stepmother said that that was what he wanted. And, and, but <laughs> I, and everybody in town came out. I mean, they filled the pews in the, the, for all of the choir with people who were coming to the funeral. It was a, it was a smaller church and, but it was packed to the gills and he was sitting there yelling party, party, party. <laughs> Just I'm going, my dad was a bit of a party animal and <laughs> You know, his friends used to go out, you know, they'd rent a limousine and go to Atlantic City and go drinking all night and whatever, come back in, in their 60s, you know, I'm just like, okay. And he's just like, party, party, where's the party? You know, I'm just like, okay, yeah. So uh, whatever, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this, but I'm not telling anybody else <laughs> because they don't need to know. But yeah, it was, it was a unique experience in that regard, but there's all kinds of ways that we, we see people who've crossed over. I used to work for a medium years ago, like 20, 25 years ago, something like that. And I remember one session that he did and he had a whole family of people and they had a relative who was a bit of a cut up and he had crossed over and they came to see the medium and he said, okay, this guy's coming through. And he's like, I don't know how to say this nicely, but I'm going to tell you how he said it to me. And hopefully that'll be okay. And he said, he's just showing me splat. He's like, I got splat. And they all started laughing. I thank God because he was really worried about saying it, but he had been crushed by machinery and literally flattened. And so, you know, that was all the verification they needed because, you know, they were like, oh yeah, that's exactly how he would say it. <laughs> I went splat. <laughs> so, and that's, that's all I remember from the reading. I mean, it was 25 years ago, but it, it was such a, a vivid image that I was like, oh yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, sometimes it's just people just need to know that their, their loved one is still around you know, or that they got safely to the other side or, you know, that, that they still exist, that they didn't cease to be right. And so, you know, that's what mediumship is about learning how to do mediumship safely. That's another story, right? Because we've been talking about these ghosts and, you know, and the, the people who are out there doing the, like your people doing the stuff, paranormal investigations, you know, they're walking into really dangerous situations all the time. 
And I think they do it with a little more, little less, a little naively, right? It's like they're going in and they're like, oh, we're going to talk to these people and we're going to do good things and we're going to clear the house and whatever. And it's like, mm, but how is your energy? How are you doing? Have you cleared your energy? Do you make sure you don't bring anything home with you? Are you aware that things can attach to things and not just places? Are you aware that they can attach to people? Are you taking care of yourself and your family? Do you have protections on your home? You know, they do now. Yeah. Well, you're guys do, but that's one group. No, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, it's something I've noticed, you know, and after, you know, working with you, you know, from the ground up, you know, like I came into this work knowing nothing, which is a great place to learn from. It was a blank yeah. canvas. So, you know, being able to see what it's like to start from the very bottom of these skill sets and how they, how they help in, in doing the, the deeper level psychic work and spiritual work, because I have seen so many mediums that just go right into mediumship. You know, they don't know shit about protections. They don't know, you know, they don't clear the energy field, all of these things. And, you know, like you can see them being chewed on. You can tell when somebody's getting chewed on, right? It's very evident and that they don't know it. And uh, there's a lot of these fly by night programs that are, are teaching people. Yeah. Yeah. You can absolutely, you know, activate these gifts. Are you ready? Right. <laughs> what what else are you ready for that? You know, because yeah. it's it's you know, there's no, you know, you can learn to turn it off a little bit, but you know, until you learn protections and things like this, you're gonna, you know, you've now just become a brighter and shinier piece than you've ever been, and everything is gonna come at you. So yeah. and that is a that is a warning. I activated my gifts on accident, and that's what happened to me. And I, I see it in a lot of people that you know they don't properly you know, energetic hygiene and, or, or protections, you know, just really learn all of it and start from the bottom. You know, it's only a few extra months, you know, and you'll, you'll thank yourself. You'll, you'll mm -hmm. thank yourself in five to 10 years. Yeah. Well, and I see that with people who are getting their Reiki certifications too. Like Reiki is taught in a vacuum. It's like, you know, I call it energy healing with you know training wheels for energy, energy healers, right? Except that it's taught in a vacuum. So you're not taught how to clear your own energy field. In a lot of cases, you're not taught how to protect your space. You, you are taught how to protect the container that you're doing for the person you're working on, but not the outside container, not the doorway, not the, they, they don't teach you to clear the, the room when you're done. Sometimes, you know, it depends on the, the teacher. Uh, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of healers will just pull things off of people and drop it on the floor and do nothing with it. And then they just walk through it and track it through their house or their office or whatever, I track it, you know, it tracks into their, their shoes and up their legs. And, you know, it just sits there and, you know, congeals on the floor energetically. It's just, it's not good. And so, you know, there's a lot of ways in which the energetic hygiene is not addressed and, and it's taught in a vacuum. So you don't know what you see. I remember in my first Reiki, I think it was my second Reiki meditation that I was, I went through in Reiki two. Um, I saw something and my, my teacher didn't have any idea what it was. She, she was like, I, I don't know what that is. And, you know, she'd been, she'd trained with the shamans in Peru even, and she, she didn't know and didn't give me any insight into it. And so, you know, there was a lot of stuff that I was pulling forth and in my practice sessions that my teacher couldn't speak to, um, you know, one of them she did, she was like, oh, you're doing psychic, you're doing a sacred geometry. And I was like, oh, what's that? And I had to go look it up, right? And at least you had a teacher, because I've met a lot of people that are doing Reiki, they're just getting online certifications. Oh, you know what I mean? Like you can get Reiki mastery for 12 bucks in six hours. Oh, that, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. that. Oh my God. Oh the, my God. Um, so there's such a thing known as a healing crisis in Reiki. And it's when you, when you move your energy from one level of energy to another, which is what the attunement process is, is you're moving your energy from one level of attunement to through the attunements, you're going from one level of channeling energy to another. And when you move, make the move, you can trigger what's known as a healing crisis. And that healing crisis can send you spiraling, right? And it can like melt down your entire life if you go from zero to Reiki master in a weekend, right? Which is what used to happen. I mean, uh, you know, there was a lady who wrote a book, uh, Diane Stein wrote, a, wrote the book Essential Reiki. And this was, oh, probably 20 years ago, 
maybe maybe a little less, but she was going around the country and doing zero to Reiki master in a weekend. And people were going into massive healing crises. Their, their worlds were falling apart. And then she would just, you know, leave, right? <laughs> Cause she would do this for hundreds of people at a time. And I'm like, there, you know, she had, a, there were a lot of people who were very upset at the time because she had published the secret symbols and the sacred symbols and, you know, all of the stuff. And I'd, I, I understood why they were upset. I also appreciated that they were published because I liked being able to see all the different versions and whatever. Uh, uh, however, I did not agree with taking people from zero to Reiki master in a weekend with no backup support because that's just, that's just not copacetic. That's not okay. So don't do that to yourself, please. It's a really bad idea. Find a teacher. Make your, do, your, do your research. Find a yeah, teacher. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's a good way to make your life fall apart if you're not careful. So... So yeah, there's a lot of ways in which we, we need foundational stuff and yet nobody tells you, you need foundational stuff. That's one of the reasons why we do this podcast is to tell you, you need foundational stuff, right? You need to learn how to manage your energy field, how to control where your energy goes, how to energetically cleanse your energy field, how to uh, protect yourself, protect your space, you know, talk to your guides, how to recognize your guides. Oh my God. I've had people who have come to me who thought they had guides and they had a demon that was pretending to be a guide and they didn't figure it out until they set their first ward and the demon couldn't get into the property anymore. And they went, <gasps> and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> problem. She's like, I've been listening to them. I'm like, yeah, you should probably stop that. They were pissed. The entity was pissed. So, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, if you're not, if you're not learning the foundational skills, then you're not actually, you're going to be in a position where you can be taken advantage of by entities and things on the other side. So uh, it's just like walking into a new country, right? If you don't know the lay of the land, you don't know where to go and who to, who to trust, right? I mean, there are good parts and bad parts of every country in the world. And so, you know, the same is true of the astral. You know, if you, if you don't know the lay of the land, you want a guide to tell you, don't go into that bar, you'll get beaten up, right? That's a bad idea. Come over here. We'll eat at this nice family restaurant that's got really lovely food and that will take care of you, right? You know, you want somebody who's going to help you navigate because it's a whole new world, right? And that's what we, we work to do with the uh, Welcome to the Woo program. That's the starting point there. So Anyway, make sure you know what you're doing before you get into something. Don't just go, ooh, that sounds cool. I'm going to learn how to do that. Because, you know, can you do it? Yeah. Could you mm -hmm. do it and be okay? You could, maybe. Could you do it and be not okay? Yep. That could happen too. You know, I, I don't my know. Money, my money's on number three. Yeah. But, In yeah. my experience of people I worked with, uh, my money is on number number three. Yeah. And so it just depends on what you're doing where you happen to stumble into, right? So you know, you know, if you live a charmed life and you're okay, then, you know, Hey, you'll be fine. But if you're not sure, maybe you should get some skills, right? <laughs> so Worth that's it. what we're talking about here. So yeah, it's all well and fine to do the bright and shiny stuff, but make sure you have the skills to be able to do it before you go there so that you don't get yourself hurt. All right. All right. So with that, I think we're going to wrap this, this episode up. Thanks for coming. We'll be here every Monday. And of course there are different episodes for different days of the week. So check those out too. Don't forget to like rate and subscribe. We and share, please share with your friends. Please let them know that we're here. That's how we get known and that's how people find us and we really appreciate it. And so that's it for this week or today, I should say, because tomorrow we'll be back again with something else, but that's all, all for this time. And don't forget that what you focus on expands and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. Have a great one. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, 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 oh,